They're the current darlings of the global soul scene, bringing their powerful tunes and addictive energy to audiences around the world. And they've been personally championed by legends such as the late great masters, Sharon Jones and Charles Bradley, three years after releasing their critically acclaimed album, Late Nights and Heartbreak. British band Hannah Williams and the Affirmations are back with a striking record called 50 Foot Woman, and I'm joined on set by the lead singer Hannah Williams and the guitarist Adam Holgate. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure to have you guys on the show. Now, 50 Foot Woman is a true gem, a soul funk gem. It's an empowering album. I can personally attest to that, and it really pumps you up. What does the title refer to? Is it a reference to the uh, the classic uh, sci-fi film from the 50s? Well, the inspiration for the title definitely came from that. So James Graham, our keys player, MD and chief songwriter <laughs> extraordinaire, um, he, he, would, he saw a poster, um, uh, which is a really famous, mm-hmm. iconic yeah. poster, amazing image. Um, and uh, he just, he kind of thought, oh, we could write a song about that. We could have a song that's about that kind of empowerment and that kind of feeling of being... Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm going to conquer the world. Um, and so he wrote he wrote 50 Foot Woman. Um, and then when we got to the point of, of releasing or well, choosing a title for the album, um, our label just loved it. We loved it. And it's a, it, I think it kind of makes the statement of you can feel empowered even if you're not feeling amazing, mm-hmm. you know, emotionally or whatever. You can you can own those emotions and you can you can kind of own yourself and your beliefs and um yeah, go out there and, and enjoy whatever the world is going to bring gonna to throw you. At you. Yeah, yeah. Well, that certainly comes across on the album. Now, you recorded the album after touring quite extensively mm-hmm. and playing some of the songs that you recorded on stage. Did that bring a particular color to to the album? Yeah, that's that's been kind of fundamental, really, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think I think touring the material is a huge part of why it sounds so kind of punchy Mm -hmm. um, because we are a live act and that's where I think our our skill and our kind of prowess really lies is as a live band and getting that energy on a record is is quite a challenge actually but um, we we recorded everything as live as we possibly could Mm -hmm. but because we'd done it all so many times on stage, there are a few exceptions. There's a few songs that came together in the studio. Literally, aren't there? yeah. There's there's a couple on the album that are t- completely yeah fresh, but they were really fresh. Like yeah. we maybe only played them. Actually, there's one that we hadn't played at all. Oh wow, okay. On on yeah. uh, in, in the live um, set, but, but most of them. Yeah, like most 90% of, them, of it had been actually quite well toured. So we were all deep inside these songs we knew them inside out they'd been under the microscope they'd been scrutinized to the to the nth degree um and at that point i think you it almost becomes like muscle memory Mm -hmm. and for me like and for everyone i think like almost like emotional memory you know you know what you're thinking about you know what you're channeling when you get to that point well it certainly comes across in the songs there's so much energy on them in fact let's (laughs) listen to one of the songs off the album well 50 foot woman let's take a listen Now, one thing I love about your album is it really sounds like an instant classic, and yet you also have a very modern feel to it. And there's one detail I love is that the vocal tracks are almost all first take tracks. Is that correct? How in the world did you do that? Because that's very rare in a recording. It is rare. Um, again, I guess going back to the last point, because because we're a live band, and I mm-hmm. think we deliver the best quality and the best kind of vibe 
sorry to use that word, <laughs> but when it when it feels live. So that first take um, for most of the songs was 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 the one, mm -hmm. um, and it was about the process of recording more than it was about the product. Actually, I think that the process itself um, led to a very together sound. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't intentional. It actually wasn't intentional because I was I was sick <laughs> the day that we started recording, um, and I felt that my my vocals wouldn't be very good, and that I'd probably just go back in and do them again. Mm -hmm. But because I was so relaxed, it all just sort of flew out and sounded good. And That's when amazing. it came to production time, it was like bingo, here That's we go. It's kind yeah. of a good lesson in life. Yeah, not to stress out too much about things yeah. beforehand. Yeah, <laughs> and there's you know there's there's been several occasions when I have really stressed out about it, and I've re-recorded stuff, and then yeah. we've gone back to the original and gone, nah, still better. <laughs> there's also an I element of, more. of like time constraints when you're recording. We had so many songs to get through, so same for the band. Quite a lot of the band takes a first or second take too. So yeah. we just yeah. laid it you're all. You're all down. in the same. Same energy yeah. at the yeah. same time. Now, one of the songs off your previous album, so Late Nights and Heartbreak, was sampled by Jay-Z mm -hmm. on his Grammy-nominated song, 444, and this really catapulted your name around the globe. Did this rise to fame put any pressure on you for this this next album? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Um, firstly, it was I mean, obviously extremely positive, amazing opportunity that, um, that this even happened. Um, it kind of delayed us a little bit because we were almost ready with certainly nearly an album before that happened. And yeah, we've been about touring half of some ready. of it, uh -huh. yeah. Um, and we were kind of ready ready to start the next project. Um, but when the Jay-Z thing happened, it was like, we've we've got to go and tour the world yeah. now. <laughs> exactly. So yes, there was there was a huge amount of, of kind of pressure to, to deliver a really solid album, but we took that with absolutely no complacency and just worked tirelessly yeah, for when a, we could. a very long time. Yeah. Um, and kind of squeezing in moments when, whenever whenever it was possible, really. Yeah. You're holding down day jobs and stuff as well at the same time, you know? That's like, very yeah. tricky to do. Yeah. And it one is. thing I love about your band, and it really comes across in your in your videos, etc., is that it really seems like you guys get along. Uh, is there yeah. a secret to working together so, you know, so much, a lot of pressure and everything, and yet also being friends? Yeah. A lot of, there's a lot of strong characters in the band. Uh -huh. Like everyone is just amazing in their own right, and it's like a family, isn't it? Mm. We've got a good a good dynamic. We have a lot of fun, which takes the stress out of a lot of situations, which mm. inevitably you face when you're on the road. Yeah, but it's it's all a learning process, you know. There's yeah, there are moments when somebody will spit their dummy out, or someone will just be tired and mm -hmm. say the wrong thing. Um, but understanding that is is really important and you know humor we, yeah humor, humor diffuses a lot of situations and talking yeah. about it when you're not feeling great because like you know mm -hmm. like everyone in the world we suffer with you know me particularly we suffer we suffer with mental health difficulties mm -hmm. and yeah, most when of you us. when yeah we when you when you kind of when you keep that inside it's it becomes all consuming mm -hmm. but if you if you're with a party of people that you can actually talk about that and how you are physically, mentally, emotionally, holistically feeling that day and try and do some cathartic things to make you feel better, yeah. then, you know, it, it makes the job not only easier, but actually much more enjoyable. And it comes across in the music as well. Well, that's, so that's really that's a wonderful great thing. to hear. Well, we're going to have to move on to some other music news uh, making headlines. Uh, three years ago, Leonard Cohen passed away uh, just a few months after releasing his 14th album, You Want It Darker. Now, fans of the legendary Canadian singer-songwriter can rejoice over the release of a posthumous record called Thanks for the Dance. It's his son, producer Adam Cohen, who was tasked with finishing the songs they had started together. The result is a powerful set of readings, essentially, to music that is sure to surprise fans and delight them as well. Essentially, Leonard lives on, and you can hear it in this track, Happens to the Heart. I was selling holy trinkets. I was dressing kind of sharp. Had a pussy in the kitchen and a panther in the yard. In the prison of the gifted, I was friendly with the guard. So I never had to witness What happens to the heart Thanks for the Dance features musical contributions from Damien Rice, Feist, and American singer-songwriter Beck, who is also releasing a new LP called Hyperspace. It's Beck's 14th studio album and features contributions from Coldplay's Chris Martin, as well as Pharrell Williams, who co-produced and co-wrote two songs, including Uneventful Days. Everything I say, no one cares. 
kick it right Leave me definitely more me than life You might know my name, you don't know my mind So a collaboration with Pharrell Williams there for Beck. I have a question for you guys. If you could collaborate with any artist, alive or dead, mm -hmm. who would it be? My personal choice would be the absolute living legend that is Brittany Howard. <sighs> From Alabama uh, Shakes. Oh, wow, she's amazing. Her mm. new album is it's fabulous. incredible. Check yeah. it out. <laughs> How about you, Adam? I've been listening to quite a lot of like Radiohead recently, so probably at the moment those guys yeah man yeah good yeah. answers that's a <laughs> maybe the two together that would be interesting as <laughs> wow. well unfortunately that's all we have time for but i want to thank you too thank you hannah williams and adam holgate thank you so much for being on the show uh, you're going to play us out with a song from your album it's called i feel it for more arts and culture news head to our website and stay in touch on social media stay tuned to france 24 more news is coming up right after this <laughs> Hung out to dry In the wind and the rain Wail song of longing While your ship drifts away Breaking your back To not feel any pain In the heart of your darkness Where the shadows remain I feel it too.